Hi guys, so Lazar here from How to Rhino. Before jumping in today's tutorial, I would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel if this is your first time watching, as we upload new videos every week. In this tutorial, we'll be talking how to convert a set of lines into single B rep in just a few steps. So something similar with the pipe when we convert line into polysurface, but in this case, we are going to convert set of lines into single close the B rep. So let me show you. Let's say we have a geometry like this, and it contains 167 lines. And we just double click, we can convert them into closed B rep. So once again, lines, double click, closed B rep. In order to make this definition work, you will need to have four plugins Lunchbox, Weaverbird, Plankton, and Exoskeleton. We will leave the link in the description so you can download all of them. Once you download them on your computer, make sure you place the files in the components folder. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we are going to use the box and from the edges of the box, we will uh, create the mesh and that mesh we are going to convert into closed B-Rep. So first, we are going to reference the box in Grasshopper uh, and deconstruct in order to extract only the edges or only the lines from the box. Uh, let me explain you this part here. The component called stream filter takes a bunch of inputs and based on the G input, in this case I use value list to take some of these inputs as, a, as an output. So for example, we have inputs from 0 to 4. If we choose box, because box is in the value 0, that input will be an output here. If I set sphere, then the sphere, because sphere is number one, will be used as a output here, and so on. So let's get back to the box. And because in the zero we place the edges of the box, those lines will be the output here. In this part here, we are going to check is there any overlapping lines. We can check it here that there is already 12 lines or 12 edges of the box but we can just in case uh, check again because we will use this for our other geometries. So basically we are going to find the middle point of the line and check is there any overlapping uh, point. It's really important to set here leave one. If there is like three overlapping points it will only leave one point. I think by default it's uh, call all or average, I'm not sure. And here we have the index numbers of the points uh, that are remaining. And these index numbers we will use as an index of these lines. And here we have remaining lines. Because we are going to use two different methods to convert the lines into closed prep, that's why we use stream gate here. So depending on the value we set in the G, so we have 0 and 1, 0 represents one method which I called cytoskeleton because one of the plugins we use in this method is cytoskeleton and number 1 it's another method which I called Weaverbird since it uses only Weaverbird plugin for doing that. If we choose the first method, the other output is disabled. If we set here another option, then this one will be disabled. Let me show you. All right. First, let me explain you cytoskeleton and plankton combining with the weaver bird. First, using lines, we'll create the mesh using weaver bird mesh from lines component. Once we have the mesh, you can see here for the cytoskeleton, we need the plankton mesh. So we need to create the plankton mesh by plugging the mesh from the Weaverbird component into plankton mesh uh, container and then deconstruct the mesh. These two guys will be placed in the component plankton from points. 
plank to mesh goes in the P mesh input and the vertices from the deconstruct mesh goes in the vertices input. And here we have plankton mesh. Uh, if we use directly this guy into uh, P mesh, uh, the definition won't work. Once we connect it here, let me show you what we have. Here we have 3D mesh and here we can change the radius. Let's turn on the edges and you can see how it looks. Now we will take boundary of each face of the mesh and convert into polyline. Once we have point lines, we will use its corner points to create the surface using a four point surface component. Once we have the surfaces, we can join them into single closed B wrap. And we can bake it. Now I'm going to show you another method how we can create single closed B wrap from the lines. Let's choose Viewer Bird. I'll turn off this. So the same step we have here, from the lines we will create the mesh using same component and then using uh, Weaver Bird picture frame we will create for each face of the mesh we will create a frame and here we can set uh, the thickness of that frame and once we have the frames we can apply them at thickness using Weaver Bird mesh thicken. All right, again, the same logic as we have here. We will extract the boundary of each face of the mesh, deconstruct to have each corner point of the polyline. These four points will be used as a corner point of the surface. Let's join them with B rep join. And if we bake, we get something like this. So I wanted to show you how we can do the same thing from the another type of geometries. Let's use a sphere now. Also, we'll use the component from the launch box. It's called icosahedron. And once we have the icosahedron, we'll take each face of it and subdivide. Once we subdivide, we can find corner point of each face and using pull point component, we can project them on the sphere. And I will turn off all of this. Once we have the projected point on the sphere, we can uh, create the polyline of, for each face. And I will turn off this. And now this part, it's, it's really important because we have overlapping lines now. For example, we have this polyline, but also we have this polyline. So here we have overlapping lines. That's why we are going to explode each polyline and choose here sphere. And now flatten this data tree in order to have all lines in the same branch. You can see we have 240 lines and we will find the uh, midpoint of each line and connect with the cal duplicate and let's check how many items we have before and after and let's check now how many points we have before and after before this step uh, we had 240 points but after that we have 120 points but how to know which lines to take that's why we need to use i output here we can see the index of each point which is remaining in the list and this index is the same as the as in this its indices here so the same index we'll use to extract the curves and let's check it here we have 120 curves and here we had 240. Okay, now we know we don't have overlapping geometry. And now we can choose which of these two methods we're going to use. 
Okay, let's choose Viewbird and turn on the final result. Again, we have closed B wrap. And you can change here if you want to adjust the thickness. All right. Let's disable this again. Now I will show you how we can create icosahedron. We can do that by adding the component from the launchbox plugin. It's called platonic icosahedron. And let's preview this. And basically from its edges, we want to create the single closed B wrap. So again, deconstruct B wrap, take all edges and then plug it here. But first we'll choose icosahedron. In order to get rid of overlapping lines, we will add this part here. And once we have a single line at each of these edges, we will apply one of these two methods. Let's take the Weaver Bird method and uh, create a mesh. And from the mesh, we will create a frame and then add a thickness. Let me preview this off first. And once we have the thickness, we'll take the boundary of its faces and create the surface. And then we'll join each surface. And let's see how the final result looks like. All right, here you can change dimensions. Let's say 0 0.4. And also here you can change the method. Instead of using Weaver Bird method, let's uh, use cytoskeleton and here we can change the radius all right now I will show you how we can create single B rep from the panels so first let's create the surface I reference it from the Rhino then using a lunchbox plugin uh, and with the component quad panels we'll divide uh, the original surface into subsurfaces. Again, we will explode each of the faces and take its lines. But first, I will choose here quiet panels and then deconstruct and remove duplicated lines. Let me turn off this. And again, we can choose which of these two methods. Let's choose again Weaver Bird and then turn on the final result. Again, the final output is a close B wrap. If you think it's too thick, we can change the dimensions here and here as well. Or if you prefer another method, you can switch here to cytoskeleton and maybe change the radius 0.3. All right, we can see that still we have the final output close bira. And the final example is if we have custom shape. Let's turn off this. So imagine you have like really complex geometry made from the lines. Also, it's really important to have control points at each of these intersections in order to make this definition work properly. So from this custom shape, we can create the B wrap structure. For example, you have really complex geometry like this one and you want to create the structure. So let's choose custom shape here. And I prefer for this kind of a geometry to use cytoskeleton rather than this method with uh, Viva Bird. So we'll use cytoskeleton, set the radius, all right, and turn on the final output. All right, if you have any questions regarding this video, please put them in the comment section down below. Now I'd like to share something with you. If you're interested in having more detailed and structured approach to learning Rhino and Grasshopper, I invite you to send the application for Rhino for Architects 2.0 program, first link in the description, where you will get a step-by-step -step approach to learning parametric modeling, organic modeling, V-Ray rendering, project presentation, and bunch of other tips and tricks. Click on the first link in the description, schedule your free one-on-one -on -one consulting call, and hope to see you inside the program.
Also, if you want to have files of all our YouTube tutorials, you can get them by supporting us on Patreon. You can find the link in the description. I'd like to thank all of our Patreon supporters. It really helps us create even better and more valuable content for you. If you like this tutorial and would like to see more of these, please let us know and make sure you subscribe and like this video as we publish new tutorials each week.